Hey, how you doing? This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show, and I'm glad to be back. Been suffering from some sinus problems, but we're back. Uh, the last show we did, this one right here that you see, uh, with Rob741 is his channel, on the ma- mainly on the SDR Uno upgrade to the software, major upgrade to the software. And this was discussing and trying out the latest changes to that upgrade. Some more enhancements, some more uh, fixes. And if you watch that show, which you should have watched because it was a pretty good show, we struggled a little bit. We Both Rob and I were hadn't used these changes that much before we did this. But Rob had some time, and we took the opportunity to do that hangout while he had some time. Well, the nice people at SDR Play, these people uh, right here, who make the SDR Play SDRs, they make uh, several models now. Uh, the top end one is right here, the SDR Duno, and I have an exciting announcement about that one, so stay tuned. Um, so, they had made some cha- they made a major change about a month ago and they added a scan feature to SDR Uno which is something i've been desperately looking for and a lot of people have been looking for because most of these software packages for these SDR don't have any scanner capability now there was a patch or an add on to SDR Sharp, which I did a show on that, and it's a little clunky, but it worked. Well, this one's a lot more polished, and it's more like a scanner radio, which is what we're looking for. Anyway, we were both new to these changes, and we were just kind of going over the changes uh, real time as we looked at them we were showing you. And we did a hangout, so we were expecting some feedback. Well, we did get a major feedback from the SDR Play software team that writes and maintains SDR Uno. And they reviewed uh, our show and had some comments, quite a few comments. And if you wa- if you watch this show, the 1695 show, it was obvious that Rob and I were both struggling with these new changes, understanding them. So anyway, I want to briefly, just briefly, go over the big email that they sent us with comments. And they sent this about a day or two after the show. And I'm just now getting around to showing it to you. So anyway, let me go to that. If I can find it here, it's down here. I extracted uh, their entire comments from an email. And it says, Dear Tom, I'm not going to read it all. Okay, but it says, Dear Tom and Rob, we've been watching your video and discussing and showing the latest versions to SDR Uno 1.31 scanning features. I thought it was an excellent video. You discussed a number of key features. Would we like to comment on some of those things that you discussed and had issues with? Yes, we we did. We were struggling there. Um, For instance, when you show the lockout facility to lock out, that's to lock out a frequency that it's found during a scan that is like a beacon or noise or something, and you don't want it to scan that one anymore. It says, you commented on the fact that the memory paddle was added to, added to, when you didn't have the save to memory paddle option selected. You suggested this might be a bug. I don't know if we suggested that was a bug or not, but we might have. This, in fact, is the intended behavior. The lockout frequency must be added to the memory panel, as this is the only place that current that currently the scanner will check to see whether frequency has been stopped and should be uh, demodulated or not. Oh, when it stops, it should be whether it should be demodulated or not. In future versions, we have discussed having a separate lockout S1B file so that your existing S1B files are not modified in any way. Okay, that sounds cool. Now, next one. 
when the range went on, excuse me, when trying to set up a range around 10 megahertz, we were trying to set up a range to, to, to capture a strong signal, which would be 10 megahertz, which is WWV, because we were trying to use that function, but we couldn't find any good signals. Um, you had difficulty adding the stop frequency. This is they explained. This is because the configuration panel will not let you add stop frequencies that is less than the start frequency. And basically, what they were saying was, we were trying to type in um, nine point five megahertz to uh, nine 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 or to ten point one or something like that. Well, because we didn't know that you could also have the frequency to be displayed in kilohertz and megahertz, as he explained here further. We were trying to put it in hertz, which is the default setting in SDR Uno, and we couldn't get the right number of zeros in. So that's what the problem was. So they go on, they go on to explain why they use, as a default, hertz, and the fact that you can change the display to be kilohertz or megahertz. Okay, so that's that. And we were really struggling on that. We finally just gave up. Uh, oh, we next one is we made a reference to blind scanning in the release, release notes when talking about being able to display the frequency description. And, and Rob and I were not, a little confused what they meant by blind scan. I interpret it as range scan. And here, here they say, in hindsight, we should have been clear that blind scan is also referred to as range scan. So I was right. So the feature is that during either a range or memory scan, if a frequency stops on, if the frequency stopped on, is present in an active memory panel, it has a description, it will display that in the scanner panel. Okay, I think it did that before, but maybe it didn't do it in the range scan. Okay, we're going on. Next one. You made reference to one of the changes that you didn't see a difference on. Previously, when selecting a frequency from the memory panel, SDR Uno would force a 2 megahertz sample rate to be selected. There, and there would be a noticeable delay when clicking on several frequencies in quick succession. Now there is a more intelligent, now there is more intelligence in the frequency selection system, so switching between frequencies in the memory panel is now quite a bit quicker than before. So that was a change they made. And then the last thing is the number of custom presets is somewhat the number of custom presets is something we've discussed. They've discussed themselves. Because I made several comments during that show that I wish the number of presets was much higher, higher so that I could put in like 25 presets. And you can go back and see what I was talking about there. Currently, it is implemented as a fixed size array. So we can add more presets at the expense of growing the INI file, where it's there are saved, and thereby show, slowing down the opening closing times of SDR Uno. I, that's okay. I, you know, slow down the opening and close times of SDR Uno, and maybe put a little caveat in there is that you could increase that, but it will slow down the times. And it says, we have discussed changing that to link to a, changing that to a linked list array. And then in theory, you could have an unlimited number of custom presets. That's what I want. That's what I want. It doesn't have to be unlimited, but a big number. But it would only slow down the INI the I file read and write process for those that chose a lot of custom presets. That's okay. I, I could live with that. And like I say, maybe you, I don't know how you would do it, but maybe you could 
make some warning if you go beyond the what the number is now, which is I think eight or twelve. I don't remember. Um, so it, they they're, they're going to consider it. You know, it's they're they're thinking about the average user that would only use you know ten or twelve, compared to me that I'm looking at using maybe twenty five to forty. Uh, so that's understandable. Uh, finally, they say, great job on the video. If you want a contribution from your, from the team for future episodes, let us know. Okay. So I can say they sent this response within 24 hours, I think, of that video. And that's what Rob and I pointed out, that they the, the people at SDR Play are very responsive. All right, let's get back to here. And specifically here. Okay. The other thing, um, about the same time frame as when we did the video and when I got this email, I had requested a demo uh, version of the SDR Duo. The SDR Duo. Which is, I was going to show it to you right here. This one right here. This is their top of the line. Uh, excuse me, it's called the RSP Duo. And it has a dual tuner. And Rob was actually showing it in that show. He has one. He was showing it in the show. And he was showing that he has set up a memory panel for scanning that scans across HF and VHF. And the way he can do that, because with the SDR play, uh, I mean the SDR uh, 1A that I have, I only have one antenna connection. So I can't scan across uh, sections of the spectrum. Like I can't do HF and VHF and UHF because I only have one antenna connection, and of course the antennas will be greatly different. They, excuse me for one second. <coughs> they are going to send me a duo for me to test, review on my shows. Again, excellent response. So that's about it. I wanna thank those people at SDR Play again. As far as if you're if you're going to get into SDRs, software defined radios, and I and I really think you should because it just opens a whole new world of things you can do with a radio with a receiver. Um, this is probably the best solution. It there are much more expensive, up to thousands of dollars. And there are much cheaper ones down to $25. But these run about 100 to, well, the duo is pretty expensive. It's about $300. But the SDR Play 1A that I have is about $125. Oh, my allergies are acting up. I'm sorry. Uh, and, they, and they work really well. I, I have done reviews of the RTL SDR dongle, uh, which sells for about $25, and it does a very good job. Of the low-end stuff, it's the best. But for the moderate price, and if you're really serious about this, get yourself an SDR Play um, receiver, either the 1A the two, the SPR Duo, and then I think there's a couple more in between. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, when I get my Duo in, which is probably about a week away, we'll be doing some experimenting with it. Awesome. Have a great day. Bye-bye.